Hello, my friends, and welcome. Today, I want to introduce you to Landon Stephan Keating. He's a garbage human being. He was an attorney in Harris County, Texas, and he thinks he should be an attorney still. Before we talk about that, though, let me tell you why he's a garbage human being. According to the complaint that was filed in the Harris County District Court, Mr. Keating was charged with multiple counts of invasive visual recording. The offenses occurred in June of 2020, and the original complaint was filed in September of 2020. This case has been ongoing for quite some time. However, I want to note the case that we're actually going to watch is in front of BODA. BODA is the Texas Board of Disciplinary Appeal. Mr. Keating has been charged in this case criminally. Then he had his license suspended by the bar, and he is appealing that suspension to try and become an attorney again. The complaint contains a probable cause affidavit by one of the deputies from Harris County, Texas, and it says, Deputy McLeod was dispatched to meet with the victim. She works out of her office, which is located located in Houston, which is in Harris County, and she states that she has known the defendant, Mr. Keating, for several years and considers him to be a good friend. Beginning in 2017, she started allowing Mr. Keating to utilize office space that she leased. She was doing this to help Mr. Keating began his law practice. Inside the business office that they shared is a common bathroom that was accessible by both the victim, the defendant, and any customers or clients that should come in. The victim stated that on June 5th, 2020, she arrived at the office and the defendant was already in the location. She placed her belongings on the desk, used the restroom, and began her workday. About two hours into her workday, she went and used the restroom again. While in the bathroom, she stated that she discovered a cell phone hidden towards the back of a small wooden bookshelf magazine shelf, which faced the toilet. She recovered the phone and observed a video of herself using the restroom earlier that morning upon her arrival to work. She hid the cell phone on her person, left the office, giving the defendant some kind of excuse about a job site emergency she had to attend to. She informed the deputy that she went to her parents' house because she was afraid to go to her home alone because the defendant knew she where she lived. Once she arrived at her parents' house, the cell phone had been locked with a pin that was needed to access it. She tried Mr. Keating's date of birth, which did not work. Then she tried her own date of birth, which unlocked the phone. She and her husband then discovered several videos going back to the year 2017 of her using the bathroom. Yes, her friend isn't even investing in a security camera, a blink, a nothing like that. He's just setting up a good old cell phone and recording her using the bathroom. That's creepy AF. There were also videos of the phone of the defendant actually placing the phone in the bathroom. So it was easily determined that it was him. So the the victim and her husband confronted Mr. Keating by phone on that same day. He admitted to the conduct, but wouldn't discuss anything further unless they would meet him in person. The victim declined, but her husband went and met him at an office complex in Spring, Texas. During their conversation, Mr. Keating admitted to the victim's husband that he had done what was alleged, and he blamed it on an unspecified past emotional hurt between him and the victim. The husband apparently recorded this admission of guilt and provided it to law enforcement. A search warrant was issued for the cell phone and obviously granted quickly by the judge. On the cell phone, they located an email address belonging to the defendant as the Apple ID, a Facebook ID belonging to the defendant, and several selfie images of the defendant, as well as over 50 different video files of the victim. They say 50 files before the count stopped. There were 690 videos stored on the phone with well over a hundred of them being the victim. The videos were focused on her bare and unclothed body as she was using the restroom in their shared office space. Not only were they able to visually confirm the actions from the video, they were able to use the GPS coordinates in the metadata to determine that yes, they were taken in the victim office building. The videos were zoomed in to focus on certain areas of the victim's body. When law enforcement contacted Mr. Keating, he agreed to meet with them. However, he indicated that on the advice of an attorney, he would not be talking at any point. Being an attorney himself, that's not surprising. Mr. Keating ended up pleading guilty to the charges and was sentenced to five years community supervision for this felony level S offense of invasive visual recordings, bath slash dress room. The commissioner for lawyer discipline brought an action in front of the board of disciplinary appeals for compulsory discipline against Mr. Keating. He indicated that Mr. Keating, having pled guilty to an intentional crime, 
and such judgment being final, he should be disbarred as provided in Rule 8.05 of the Texas Rules of Disciplinary Procedure. Rule 8.05 states that when an attorney is convicted of an intentional crime and that conviction becomes final, the attorney has accepted probation with or without an adjudication of guilt for intentional crime. The attorney shall be disbarred unless the Board of Disciplinary Appeals suspends his or her license to practice law. Mr. Keating was disbarred for his wildly inappropriate conduct and promptly appealed the disbarment. There have been several motions filed that are quite lengthy, and this is the oral argument that follows up those motions in front of the Board of Disciplinary Appeals. Now, this is only related to reinstatement of his law license and has nothing to do with the criminal charges. He has already been convicted in the criminal case and sentenced to five years of probation, and that cannot change.
facts of your orders, and uh, deferred adjudication and filed in all of those with the same style. Uh, at this time, I'd like to offer the following exhibits. Um, and I will pause as I'll ask you to make sure that I'm going to give you a few objections. Exhibits 1 through 5 are certified copies of the indictment and all five of the previously mentioned cases. Mr. Wilson, any objections? This is one through five, which are the indictments in all five orders. Exhibits one through five, we'll get it. Um, six through ten are certified copies of the orders of adjudication in all five of the underlying criminal matters. Exhibits six through ten, we'll get it. Uh, the original certificate is Exhibit 12, original certificate from Blake A. Hawthorne, Clerk of the Supreme Court of Texas, dated January 3rd, 2024, indicating that respondent is currently authorized to practice law in Texas. Mr. West? Exhibit 12 is admitted. Did you have an exhibit 11 for this case? Yes. Exhibit 11 is my original affidavit attesting to the fact that the respondent is the same person as the person identified as the defendant in the underlying criminal matters. Exhibit 11 is It would be not, it would be not deceptive if 
you told the deceitful, if you told the person you were going to record them, and you wouldn't have been convicted of the issue. I've also argued that the case law allows um, aggravating factors in so much that if it's a pattern or if it is a habit, you've got five separate pleas to a felony conviction of the same crime happening over a span of time. It wasn't a one time instance. All of those matters combined is what we believe, and we should find that the crimes that Mr. Kitty has pled to are crimes of moral turpitude, thereby subject to compulsory discipline, and therefore, by filing the certified copy of the final order of conviction, the commission has not been disappointed that Mr. Kitty should be disappointed. Thank you. Mr. West, you may proceed. I understand, and I 
information that was included in your briefing? Yes, and it's, 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 uh, it's a summary of cases. Thank you. 
you this a long time to talk to, but they specified that this is only for recording violations of the court recording in the Bavaria. I'm sure that they've used the, the, the phrase more interpreted in the sexual assault of a child or the purchase of a child. Well, what I'm saying to you is that I'm fine for you to say you have to work with these elements and make an evaluation of all the elements. Based on those elements, and if you make this decision in this case, then you're going to make that decision in every case that comes before you and follow you next in the future. And I don't believe a lot of court is going to allow this court to do it. I think it's allowed by the court to do that. As to this, if I can ask you, yes, of course, this is not a kind of more interpretive if he was ordered as conditions of probation to report to the sex offender unit. Why is uh, the 
to simply dive into the accounts. What's going to be guilty to the offense of the place because of the report of the was based on the footage of the case and the justification for five years. We received no conviction. Accordingly, we shall do our eight point oh six responding as attorney who received probation to defer the two things from information to the board and to determine the case of this crime. As such, the board has the discretion to decide whether it imposes a sanction of suspension or disbarment against the client. Further, the board may consider mitigating factors in its sanction decision. Today, you will hear evidence of several mitigating factors that weigh in favor of sanction or suspension. Specifically, the board will hear from the respondent, Mr. Keating himself. He has testified he has a disciplinary history. He is fully compliant with the topic of his probation. He is deeply remorseful for his conduct and that he is the underlying conduct is in no way related to the respondent's legal practice. The board will also hear from his father's colleagues who are here today to testify that the respondent is a diligent attorney and zealously advocates for his clients and that responded as a trusted colleague. Finally, the board will hear from the respondent's family, who will further testify to the respondent's character and his desire to be loved. Accordingly, based on the evidence that we will bring, the eight factors favor or weigh in favor of suspension, the respondent will request that the board exercise discretion and enter a sanction against the respondent for suspension and the duration of the respondent's probation. I would also ask that this board consider giving it, if it is an order of suspension, that it be a, uh, an order that is fully appropriate for the final suspension. By the way, the board would have, through the commission, the opportunity to uh, investigate, look at, and see if my client is following through with his requirements. He is passing the law, and he's doing well. Give the ability to not only immediately disbar him if he fails in his upcoming criminal probation, but will give you the opportunity to look at his actions in his probation felt like he is not fulfilling his obligations under probation, even without the criminal probation. Thank <laughs> you. 
that's about you about your personal knowledge, not things that people have told you or things that you've read. And in this case, if he if veers off of that territory, then <laughs> just attack as it comes. So, what, uh, what steps specifically you see? Thank <laughs> you. 
So we can work prior to the incident. Thank you. 
Since you replaced the one purpose of the third case, what have you done to build your life? Thank <laughs> you. 
forward to fully blue data suspension so that you can continue to actually on certain plots. And uh, is there anything else I've not asked you that you'd like to know today? Right. That's You said that the office space that you were using during the time of your actions uh, was also utilized by the victim's husband and the victim's father. And then you, I know you said that they were in there often, but did they have access to the bathroom that you were doing the recording? Did you ever use the bathroom that you were doing the recording? So are you saying that you you wait until everybody else is the one before you set up the, the video? Yes. Okay. What is your relationship uh, with the victim now? Yeah. Is that a forever circumstance or is that solely a consequence? Thank you. 
Approximately two weeks following the hearing, Boda issued a written decision in the matter of Landon Stefan Keating. On the 26th day of April, 2024, the above styled and numbered compulsory disciplinary action was called for hearing before the Board of Disciplinary Appeals. Petitioner, the Commission for Lawyer Discipline, appeared by attorney and announced ready. Respondent, Landon Stephan Keating, appeared by and through his attorney of record. All questions of fact and all issues of law were submitted to the Board of Disciplinary Appeals for determination. Having considered the pleadings on file, having received evidence, and having heard the argument of counsel, the Board of Disciplinary Appeals is of the opinion that petitioner is entitled to entry of the following findings in order. Finding of fact. The Board of Disciplinary Appeals finds that 1. Respondent Landon Stephan Keating, State Bar Card Number 24086647, is licensed and authorized to practice law in the state of Texas by the Court of Texas. 2. On or about February 26, 2021, the Grand Jury of the 208th Judicial District Court of Harris County, Texas, issued five separate indictments charging respondent with the felony of invasive visual recording. Each case was styled the State of Texas v. Landon Stephan Keating, case numbers 1692087 through 1692091, and each stated that the respondent unlawfully with the intent to invade the privacy of the complainant and without the consent of the complainant recorded by electronic means a visual image of the complainant in a bathroom. Each indictment referenced a particular digital file recorded on a specific date. On or about April 4th, the 208th District Court, Harris County, Texas, issued five orders of deferred adjudication in case number 1692087010010, styled State of Texas Keating, each corresponding to one of the indictments described above. The orders show that the respondent pleaded guilty to the state jail felony offense of invasive visual recording bath slash dress room. The respondent was placed on deferred adjudication, community supervision for five years, conditioned upon respondent's compliance with specific terms of probation. Four, respondent Landon Stephan Keating is the same person as the Landon Stephan Keating who is the subject of the indictments and orders of the deferred adjudication described above. Conclusions of law. Based on the foregoing findings of fact, the, dis the Board of Disciplinary Appeals makes the following conclusions of law. Number one, this board has jurisdiction and an affirmative duty to hear and determine the compulsory discipline matter. Two, as announced during the hearing on April 26, 2024, respondent's plea to the jurisdiction is denied. Three, as announced during the hearing on April 26, 2024, respondent's motion for permissive interlocutory appeal and stay of proceedings subject to respondent's plea for the jurisdiction is denied. Four, as announced during the hearing on April 26, 2024, respondent's emergency motion for continuance urged during the hearing is denied. Five, in deciding whether a felony offense is an intentional crime and serious crime, as those terms are defined by the Texas Rules of Disciplinary Procedure, the board looks solely to the elements of the respondent's crime to determine if those elements involve any of the kinds of acts or characteristics encompassed within the Texas Supreme Court's definition of moral turpitude. Six, a felony involves mor moral turpitude when it involves dishonesty, fraud, misrepresentation, or deliberate violence, or must reflect adversely on an attorney's honesty, trustworthiness, or fitness as an attorney. Seven, looking solely to the elements of invasive visual recording under Texas Penal Code 21-15, respondent Landon Stephan Keating pleaded guilty to and was granted probation and deferred adjudication for an intentional and serious crime as defined by the Texas Rules of Disciplinary Procedure 1- 0.06 V and GG. Compulsory discipline is warranted in this case. The board has discretion to enter an order of disbarment or suspend respondent's license for the duration of the term of deferred adjudication probation. 10. In considering whether to disbar or suspend 
The board has applied the factors expressed in Ray Izasi. 11, the board may consider evidence of the underlying facts and circumstances in determining the compulsory discipline sanction to be imposed. 12, based on the relevant factors and the evidence and arguments submitted by the parties, the board determines that disbarment is the appropriate sanction. It is accordingly ordered, adjudicated, and decreed that respondent Landon Stephan Keating State Bar Card number 24086647 be and hereby is disbarred from the practice of law in the state of Texas and is licensed to practice law in the state be and hereby is revoked. It is further ordered, adjudicated, and decreed that respondent Landon Stephan Keating is prohibited from practicing law in Texas, holding himself out as an attorney at law, performing any legal services for others, accepting any fee directly or indirectly for legal services, appearing as counsel in or in any representative capacity in any proceeding in any Texas court or before any administrative body or holding himself out to others or using his name in any manner in conjunction with the words attorney at law, attorney, counselor at law, esquire, Esquire or lawyer. It is further ordered that respondent Landon Stephan Keating shall immediately notify each of his current clients, if any, in writing of this disbarment. In addition to such notification, the respondent is ordered to return any files, papers, unearned money, or other properties, if any, which belongs to clients and former clients and is in the respondent's possession or control to the respective clients or former clients or any attorney at the client's or former client's request within 30 days of the date of this judgment. It is further ordered that respondent Landon Stephan Keating shall file with the state Bar of Texas Chief Disciplinary Counsel within 30 days of the date of his judgment, an affidavit stating that all current clients have been notified in the respondent's disbarment and that all files, papers, monies, and other property belongings, I think that should say, have been returned to all clients, former clients, have been returned as ordered herein. Oh, there we go. If respondent should be unable to return any such files, monies, and properties, respondent's affidavit shall state with particularity the efforts made by the respondent with respect to each particular client and the cause of his inability to return to said client any file, paper, money, or property. It is further ordered that respondent Landon Stephan Keating shall honor before 30 days from the date of the judgment, notify in writing each and every justice of the peace, judge, magistrate, administrative judge, or officer, and chief judge of each and every court or tribunal in which the respondent has in any manner, has any matter pending, if any, of the terms of this judgment, the style, cause number, pending matters, and the name and address, telephone number of the client respondent has represented. It is further ordered that respondent Landon Stephan Keating shall file with the state bar of Texas chief disciplinary counsel's office within 30 days of the date of judgment and affidavit stating that he has contacted every judge in court. It is further ordered that respondent Landon Stephan Keating shall immediately surrender his Texas law license and permanent state bar card to the statewide compliance monitor office of the chief disciplinary counsel state bar of Texas for a transmittal to the clerk of Supreme Court of Texas. It is further ordered that this disbarment shall be made a matter of public record and that notice of this disciplinary action shall be published in the text bar journals. Thank you.